Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. These are the paid requests for Joseph. For those interested, request any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, video game, let's tries, playthroughs, what have you. Feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And yeah, this is for themes from 1989, which... It took a while for me to do this review. I apologize, Joseph, because... I watch this film on Tubi, and I I don't even know how to explain this movie, other than to say, this is literally one of the worst films I have ever seen in my life. Does that be being hyperbolic? Does that being just for the diggles? I mean, this makes Feeders in Feeders 2 look like Alien and Aliens. <laughs> Canada, Canada, Canada. You give me Seth Rogen, and then you give me this. Cue the South Park song. Blame Canada. This is Sean Toronto. It was made by a guy named Andrew... Jordan Super 8 it was filmed on it came out in 1989 and this was just completely it was like imagine if the crew from the evil dead if they made that movie but they were crackheads that just got out and stumbled out of a car crash and then they grabbed some Super 8 cameras and said just go <laughs> That's the only way to explain it. Where the post-production sound, every piece of dialogue is dubbed badly. There are people that laugh that sound like Master Betty from Kun Pao and Enter the Fist. There are times where the sound goes in and out. There are times where you have the music, which is like the Casio from Hell. And then you have no other soundtrack but just the person's voice. As they wait, shouldn't there be other sound effects? There's like a creature, but it's not making sound. There's certain scenes of that. It's a story where it seems like it's simple enough. It does. It seems like it's simple. Two guys, Don and Fred, they go to see their friend Dave at a cabin. The three of them hang out. There were some experiments going on, and there's these creatures, about this big, looking like paper mache ants. But then it overcomplicates itself, where I guess the lead guy is going crazy, and then he's seeing things, but are those things happening? And then he escapes, but is it a dream? But it is a dream. And then... Uh, I, it overly complicates itself, so it gets confusing. Uh, the acting... I find it funny that at the end of the film, it says you experience things. <laughs> You're damn right I did. I did experience things. Jesus. And... Going back a bit, I don't know how much this film cost, but if it was more than $8, I'm going to be very disappointed. It has these news program parts where it just randomly cuts to a news team, which is Amber Lynn, who I guess was a porno actress. Although she doesn't get Nate did, so it's weird. You get a porno actress... Probably spent a bit more money on her, I would assume, but you don't have her get naked. Someone gets naked at the beginning, unless that was her and a mask, and she's like, I'll do it without, you know, with a mask on, pretend to be a different character. Maybe? I don't know. Don't know if there's any documentaries on the makeup things. Although I would watch it, to be honest, just to see what the hell was going on with this. But I'll cut to this news program 
where Amberlynn is the reporter. She's behind, she's in front of like a bunch of TVs, as if she's in a TV store. And she just tosses at first like random bits. Like at one point, it cuts to her talking about the George Romero copyright case on Night of the Living Dead. There's a point where, and she just cut off mid-sentence. Like she's in the middle of talking. She's about to say something, and it cuts. There's a bit where literally she's over here, and she's literally reading cue cards as she's talking. And I'm like, wow. And I think what beats it over feeders and feeders too is that as horrible and as terrible as they were, I didn't get confused by the third act. Where it felt as if in the third act of this film, it's like they gave up and they just gave up on editing. They gave up on the, the sound. They just... All I could describe is like they gave up. I don't know how else to describe it. And to go back it step by step, you start off with the company logo and then the title themes. Then you have the scene of a guy with glasses in a basement. There's this muffled laughing. Who's laughing? I don't know. Someone keeps saying, have my baby, have my baby. And this lady with a cheap demon mask that literally costs a dollar from the Halloween store gets naked, shows her titties. And then he puts his hand in a box, gets bitten. All guys should be careful putting their hands in any box, female or otherwise. And then he wakes up. What that dream has to do with anything, there is no one with a demon mask. He does have a lady named Susan who is just dying. But that's it. I mean, I mean, what that has to do with it, I don't know. Other than, I guess... You find out later that the experiment was Dave was like impotent or something. Like he couldn't pump a baby into someone. So someone did an experiment. But then she gave birth to something else. I guess that's the only... That's why she keeps saying have my baby. Why she had a demon mask on, I don't know. I'm on anything else. And let me show the titles again of things. I'm like, thank you for letting me know twice what you're fucking movies called so then Don, Don and Fred they go to this cabin I assume because it's so dark you can't see shit you can't see anything if I, I put my hand like this you still see more than what you saw on this at least that scene. And then a good chunk of the opening is... After that is... Them kind of rummaging through this house. That doesn't seem that big. There's like tape recorders and fridges. And they play it. And there's weird voices that sound goofy. This guy... It's like they're trying to reference the evil dead... But they didn't want to get any details because I guess they were afraid they would get sued. Because what's the last time you see a movie with a tape recorder with voices and then something happens? So he goes, remember that movie you know? That weird that weird one with those weird things in it? <laughs> that sounds like that scene in Clerks. You know the movie with that guy who did that thing in that movie? That movie, you know, that weird one with those weird things? I don't know. The Flash. And Ezra Miller is pretty weird. And they put their coats in the freezer. Like, you can't just put it over your chair or something. You put your coats in the freezer? I don't know why. I mean, I think they try to explain it, but they just, like, just because. 
Daytona has to be. And again, I'll cut to this news report where Amber Lynn is either reading off a cue card or talking about random stuff. Eventually, it cuts back and he mentions these two. Grant, will people even know these folks are missing? I guess. Does this lead to anything? Like a search party? Or a group of people are searching for them and then they come across the house and there'll be some fight, there'll be battles, there'll be some rescue. No. This whole news report thing is completely useless and pointless. It does nothing. And at one point when it cuts to it, there's like two other people there that look like they're ready to get it on and oh, we're filming? And then like Amber is like, <laughs> and then it just cuts. I'm like, you could cut all that out and nothing would change. And if you heard that, this literally my stomach rumbling. Just like, oh my god, are you talking about this? Yeah, I'm talking about the movie, and then we'll eat. <laughs> Sorry, I have to get this out. I tried to record this before, and I just got dumbfounded in the middle of it. Like, I don't know what else to say. Shit. And then, like, I I don't know what the hell this scene was about. Because it seems like it's cut from another movie. Where all of a sudden, there's, like, some ritual. And there's a guy who's, like, a, some doctor. That maybe he's a guy with doing experiments. But then, I don't know if it's reference to what the reporter said or... We're supposed to just see what happened to this place before? I don't know. But it, it's saying about how... It's showing like... There's these two guys... Who put bodies in and out of the place on stretchers. And they're talking like... <laughs> they're laughing like that. Like if Seth Rogen was pumping his dick in the Gomer pile. And the doctor is like taking someone's hand and cutting it off for some reason. And he takes a ton out of the guy and then he's taking his eyeball out. And the sound effect is literally. I swear to God, that's the sound effect of taking the eyeball out. And the bad guy's laughing like Master Betty from Crumpo. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is going on? What What is this? And then it cuts back to the present time. And the guy, uh, Fred, comes out of the closet. It's almost as if he entered the closet and he saw this whole movie and then left. I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what's going on. And we go back to these guys. One filling his beer with water. And we see it all. They sit down, they watch a movie. We spend like five minutes of them watching this movie on TV. That doesn't look any I mean, they're like, oh, this is stupid. Well, look how bad this is. I'm like, your movie looks worse. And that movie looks bad too, but your movie looks worse. It looks way worse. Shut up, stomach. Damn, I know. Apparently my stomach wants to review this movie too. Shut up. Fuck. And the dialogue. And then this time you come with me, you're staying home. So in others, you don't want them to come with you, you know. I keep pausing because I try to remember what the hell happened. So, Dave finally arrived. Like, Dave, I don't even know where he popped in. I don't know if he was just sleeping. Was he in the basement? Was he outside? He just popped back in. I'm like, no one bothered to look for Dave around this place to find him. Or where did he come from? 
and all this turn on the TV and stuff. He didn't hear any of this. He just pops in, and the three of them talk, and then our lead guy, Don, he leaves for a bit, and there's like a bud, and they decide to put a bud in the sandwich. And they spend like the guys trying to eat, and oh, oh my god, you got mosquitoes. And then he bites in the sandwich, he's like, mmm, mmm. Hey, I like to add some spicy stuff to my sandwiches. So, okay. Oh, and there's a bit where, da where uh, Dave, after you put the bug in the guy's sandwich, but before the guy's back in the room, he gets up and he burps and he farts and he sits down and he farts again. And Fred goes, sounds good. Sounds great. What, the fart? The fart sounds good? I never, I mean, I just, I'm the weirdo. I've never complimented someone's fart. That it sounds good or great. Just, that's just me. And that's where then it, and when the sandwich and he eats it, blah, 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 then it cuts to it again. George Romero is still fine his taste on Night Living Dead. What does this have to do with the fucking movie? What's it got to do with the movie? What's it got to do with it? What does it have to do with the damn movie that I'm watching? So Dave has a little dog and it just killed off screen. And none of them knows it. They tell stupid stories like about some claw story. Which this is like twenty minutes in. And each time we talk it goes to the, the lead guy, Don. A bit of facial. You just see a piece like a hair right on the top corner here. Okay, imagine over here there's like a piece of hair that's like this hanging in, in the corner over here. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Because on other shots it's fine, but on that shot it's like they could not know there's one piece of hair here. I think that's why I couldn't remember the story because it kept my I kept paying attention to that damn hair in the corner, or where the hell it was. How do you get paper children? You fuck a bad lady. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like they go into a room and their buddy Fred is missing, and they say he got sucked into the third, fourth, and fifth dimension. What the hell does that mean? Fred just disappears for no reason, and then literally like 30 minutes, 40 minutes later, he just pops back for no reason, with a chainsaw. Where was he? What was going on? What was happening? You'll never know. He just, he just disappeared. No noise. Nothing apparently outside. By the way, this whole time, does he find uh, what's going on with Dave and his... Her, his woman Susan and again this experiment where she wanted to get pregnant and then these things happen first off why are there so many of these things did they just keep popping out of her stomach or were they do these things reproduce by themselves I don't know if they even tried to explain that if this is the experiments what does it have to do with the thing we saw earlier where the guys like cutting this guy's hand off and plucking eyeballs to the sound of what does that have to do with anything that's what I'm talking about by it gets more confusing as it goes it's like they wrote this on the back of a McDonald's bag like they ordered some McDonald's and they just wrote the script on the bag while they carried it out and one's driving one's just writing all the shit I would say on the back of a burger wrapper, but there's a little bit more confusion in here. I think it'll fit the whole bag. And I, so it's the two of them. The girl Susan's dead. Your buddy Fred is missing. I do not understand why they don't just leave the place. Oh, we're afraid. Like you're in danger there. Make a run for it. 
with flashlights or something. Get back to your car. Why don't you just run and get back to your car? This guy obviously has a car too, I would assume. Go to one of your cars. Go, leave, get help. Make a run for it. You're going through the woods. These things are this big. I think you can outrun them. Plus, you see these things barely move anyway, so you can't run. They never leave the place. They never go outside. They never try to get to their car. They never leave the fucking woods. I don't know why. They don't. It's, I swear to God, they don't explain it, or they tried and fucking... People are like, well, man, what's so big deal? Just enjoy it. Just dumb. I Okay, some people may enjoy this as so bad as good. They may enjoy it that way. But I'm also sitting here and going... If this hasn't a Blu-ray yet, I did, I would bet money this would be one of those Blu-rays that Vendor Syndrome or someone else does. It'd be like a 4K of this movie. Maybe lower with features. I might... So... I'm getting mad at something that hasn't happened yet. Calm down. It's on Tubi for free. But I think what it is is just that you're watching this and you're going... Wow. Really, anything can get made and released on VHS tape. It, it makes you go, man, like, yeah, I could have just made, It really, I guess it really is easy to make movies and get them on VHS tape. At least they were back in 1980, at this day. Maybe I just think of, like, all the movies that were never made, that we never got to have exist in our realm, but films like this got to exist. And also, to give credit to films with low budgets that maybe they have flaws, but The Deadly Spawn, this film I saw, The Strangeness, um, low, you know, of course, people could talk crap about The Blair Witch Project, that's fine, that has a lot more merit than a film like this. Little known films like Butterfly Kisses or The Tunnel and... I, just throughout the years of you know, other independent films that just have a lot more actual talent to them than this. You kind of just sit there and go, what were they thinking on some, any of this shit? Why don't they leave? Why does Dave all of a sudden take his shirt off and then... Like when Don is in another room, this guy just scratches on the door, and then he's like choking himself. And then when Don comes in, it's like, I'm like, why were you scratching at the door? Why are you trying to choke yourself? Why is your shirt off? What are you fucking doing? What are you fucking do? What are you doing? So they both enter a bathroom, they see one of those like paper mache ants, and then like they do like nothing with it. As it, I guess Dave goes in, I guess kills it, and then I guess what flushed it down the toilet? Did you hear the toilet flush? Uh, there's a bit where they go in the basement and our lead gets a hammer and actually hits Dave in the ham with the hammer and says, Oh, I hammered your head and are you alright? And then he's the opposite of concerned. Like the next moment he goes, oh, I should hit you again for being in the way. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, first, like, oh, I, I hammered you in the head. Are you all right? I should have hit you again. You, you're in the way. Sp spoilers eventually, Dave dies. He's by himself, Don. He's get this drill. He's just going around, drilling, drilling. By, I mean, the problem of effects would be insulting to people who actually do effects. That's whatever they found at a store. Or so. I don't know what the hell. Oh yeah, and then Fred just pops in with a chainsaw. The cut a couple. And then at one point, like this is where it gets more confusing. I guess I didn't trying to show that the Lee's losing his mind because he hears his friend dying and this is what I'm talking about it feels like this movie gave up it's like they knew 
what they were making was bad and they just said let's just go full tilt bad so the guy's like oh it's nothing I'm alright I'm still alive it's nothing so the guy looks and he sees the guy like stole and body parts and goes hey I'm fine what the fuck is going on like I don't, it didn't really have this type of sense of humor before. And then... What the hell was it? The, what was it? Oh yeah, there were times where like the, the sound goes in and out. this doctor guy arrives where the hell did the doctor come from why did he even go there and he like the fighting and he like locks the guy in the bathroom or something and then he runs out of the house i mean why didn't you try to why did you not try to run out of the house before and then you find out it's a dream why don't you run out of the house now what's stopping you from running out of the house why can't you go into a car what happened to your car what is going on so then he finds a guy, and the guy's asking, Are oh, you sure this is not a dream? So then the guy wakes up. I think the doctor's there again. I think, what, he locks him in the bathroom again or something? And then he just sits down and goes, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. And there's like a paper mache ant stand, sitting there behind him. I guess to assume that they're eventually going to kill him. Or he's just going to... Or is the movie trying to do some meta thing? Not meta, but like trying to do some thing. That, because that's the thing. Like the doctor comes by and then they try to make it seem as if Don has been crazy the whole time. And he just imagined everything. Because the doctor comes in and goes, there's nobody here. Like there's, there's no uh, creatures here. You killed them all. And I don't know if this movie's trying to make us assume that, yeah, Don was crazy and killed everybody, and why was he crazy? Or these things, or it's just, I don't know what it's trying to do. I I, I would assume not. He says, I'll be okay. But then he keeps saying, I'll be okay, but the ant's not attacking him. So it's just like, I don't fucking know. That's what I'm talking about. And then you've experienced things, and like, you damn work fucking around. Thanks, Canada, for giving me this fucking movie. Like, okay, you want to see a movie? Let's see, is okay. You want to see a movie that is this done well with a low budget? I'll show you. This is how you do it. And this is why I give crap to movies like this, because it can be done. There's nothing out there. There's nothing out there by the director Rolf Tinevsky. It's a low budget film where people go to a cabin in the middle of nowhere and there's little creatures these creatures here which still look a lot better than what you see in this movie it's like I know this came out I think afterward in 1990 a year after 1990 this is what things wants to be and it fails in every single way I mean, if you like enjoying bad cinema, this is definitely up your alley. It is, again, one of the absolute worst films I've ever seen in terms of yeah, post-production audio, editing, story that gets more or more needlessly confusing. I didn't buy the third ad. Like I said, I don't know how to describe it, but you just, it's this feeling of they gave up. Granted, they were not trying before, but they they gave up even more because the editing is even more lazy and just more cutting the random stuff 
and then it's like cutting this, this, then this, and I'm like, wait, how does it all work? It's like almost as if like people quit and then they didn't finish it, and then they had what they did and try to edit it, a rest of a movie. And the Casio from Hell is playing still on the soundtrack. That's another funny thing. When the second tile of things came up at the beginning, it will say music. And it listed like five names. And I'm like, did all these people do the music? No, I'm sure these are... No, I, I guess because then it says starring. And then it's showing the actors. I'm like, they, it's like they have more people in the music than... People in the movie? If that wasn't from music, I don't know what it was. It just said music by blah blah blah, and then it showed a name, then it showed a name, then it showed a name. I'm like, really? And apparently, there are people that have the soundtrack. I don't know why, unless they like torture. <laughs> they love their eardrums to burst every once in a while. Hey, my eardrums need to bleed a bit. There's too much stuff in there. Let me turn the soundtrack on. Little... Sorry, I was going to sneeze. I swear to God. Just uh, allergic to the bullshit of this movie. That's why I keep going around like this, touching my face, because I'm just... That's why I give credit to some films that people go, why? Like The Strangeness. The acting in that film is not great. But just the way it's filmed and edited and the music and some of the stop motion effects. There's a lot more merit than a film like this. Like, okay, if you think that, that or that film is bad, you look at this. Again, this is a much better film. I mean, I know that's, I know it's not the case, but almost as if Rolf Knifsky saw this movie and go, this ain't how you do it. <laughs> Let me show you how it's done. But, and, but of course, you know, Evil Dead. That's the ultimate in how you do it the right way. But I mean, yeah. Try to think if there's anything else I could say, but no. I am surprised Vinegar Syndrome has not released this. Probably soon. Unless they did, I just don't know it. We'll see you guys later. Bye for now.